It is a bot campaign unlike anything we have ever seen before. Vast sums of money, bank accounts, identities, and all sorts of things happening in an effort to manipulate social media, entertainment, and the things we love. Folks, this video has impacts going all the way from the Gina Carano lawsuit to the big decision to be made in November. We're not making this up. We have the receipts and we're talking to the man who has uncovered it all, including the company that is allegedly behind every bit of it. Hello folks and welcome back to the Pro Channel. Happy day to every one of you out there. We have a big video on your way, this time talking about what is going on with bots changing the discourse around entertainment, but it goes far beyond that. Welcome back, Master of the TDS. I'm doing well. How are you? Well, I'm having just a dandy of a day, and uh, particularly because you are here, Master of the TDS, and I want to say a huge thank you and congratulations for all the work that you have been doing you have opened the door and opened our eyes to what is going on in the world of bots and a brand new wave of bots. And folks, if you think this is something we've seen before, think again and watch this video. We're going to show you otherwise. Again, this has implications all over the place, including Gina Carano, uh, Lucasfilm, Disney, video games, and even, well, bigger things that we'll discuss perhaps later on. Now, one of the things that I want to say is if you have not yet, folks, seen the video from Gothic Therapy, where Master the TDS breaks all of this down and provides the receipts, the company behind all this, you've got to see it. You've just absolutely got to see this. It's, uh, it's wonderful stuff. But before we go any further, it's time to ask the big question to you, TDS, and that is, folks out there probably are wondering... Could you explain to us, please, how is this different from anything we have ever seen before? What makes it distinct? Uh, yes, because uh, Twitter has something that a lot of other social media platforms do not have, and that's the ability for people to not just be monetized, but to actually have where they share in the ad revenue generated by their posts. Uh, you have to have a blue check mark to do this. Uh, but with the help of some lovely people over at Upper Echelon, uh, a YouTube channel, that's a great channel, they helped me out, uh, we were able to find not just these bots in mass, but we were able to locate the source of the bots, and by the source I mean the company behind this, who is actually using this uh, shared ad revenue. Uh, basically, they're using Twitter like a their own personal ATM by manipulating traffic with giant bot networks to literally make them tons of money, uh, either right under Elon Musk's nose or even possibly with Elon Musk's knowing. So TDS, let's talk about something that's very complicated, I think, and also very fascinating at the same time. There's, there's sorts of, sort of two parts to this, I would say. And so the first, first thing that I'm thinking about is that often – these bots that are associated with this vast conspiracy of blue check marks connected with bank accounts, connected with fake identities, or perhaps real stolen identities, whatever the case might be, they're promoting entertainment. They're promoting TV shows, streaming, movies, um, Disney, video games, etc. And so that's an odd thing for bots to be promoting unless someone is paying them to do that. Because, well, you would anticipate that whatever this is takes a large amount of effort, and a large amount of funding to do. The other thing I'm considering here is that I wonder if if it's a net negative or a net positive for Twitter. In other words, I get that having visible bots flooding your platform is no good. At the same time, are they making money for Twitter? Is that one reason that perhaps they have not been rooted out so far? Or do you think that they are siphoning, as perhaps they allege, siphoning money out of the wallet of Twitter and out of Elon Musk and making an utter mockery of him and the entire endeavor. So that's what they claim. They actually, the, the company behind this claims, and this is a direct quote, that you can get money out of Elon Musk's pocket. That's one of the things they specifically say. Um, 
To answer the question of whether this is a negative for Twitter, I would say yes and no. And I'll explain what I mean. I would say it's negative because we all have to be on Twitter and interact with people. And for all we know, sometimes the people we're interacting with may not even be real. I mean, let's face it, AI has come so far that we don't know necessarily. And in a couple of years, we may not know at all. Uh, but a lot of the traffic on Twitter has been known to be bots. But now it seems like it's gotten even worse with Elon Musk. And I'm not just talking about those link in bio bots that we get all the time. There's tons of them. I actually would say about seven different kinds that I've been tracking, but these ones in particular that I've been focused on are the ones that are promoting things. Now, I will say that they definitely influence the trending. I've actually confirmed this because recently a lot of them were posting about Doctor Who. And what I noticed is Grok, the uh, AI that's built into Twitter now, uh, now do summaries of certain events. And it was summarizing the Doctor Who stuff, but no matter how many people were posting about the low ratings, whatever, there was always a positive spin to it, which was really weird in my mind because I'm looking at it and I'm looking at all the posts and I'm like, it says, oh, it did badly, but critics love it. And I'm looking and scrolling and it's like everybody's saying how it's, oh, I don't really like it or, oh, I liked it, but, but, or whatever. And you kind of go, well, what's going on there? Well, if we keep in mind that they can do this, it's potentially skewing the results there. And that's actually evidence of that. Now, I don't cover that in my video here, but what I do cover is, as I said, this, this company using these bots to farm for monetization. They're definitely doing it, as I said, to take money out of Elon Musk's pocket. But I would say, at least in regards to Elon Musk, now, I don't know how much he's involved in this. You can say maybe he's aware, maybe he's not. The point being is that for Elon Musk, one of the things that he's been claiming recently is the increased traffic to Twitter. Now, how does this benefit him? Well, because if there's a lot of bots on here, doing this kind of stuff. And we've known there were bots on Twitter for a while, but now that it's increased, what it makes it look like is that the organic traffic is increasing. Because think about it, especially when a lot of these bots have blue check marks, they're now technically going to be recognized as people, at least according to, to Twitter's analytics, I would imagine. And they're now recognized as people, and that inflates the amount of interactions. And so Elon Musk can claim, look, 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 we're getting so much traction and then advertisers might be more willing to invest in Twitter and bring advertising back. But in reality, it's more bots than people. So let's hold on to that topic for a moment because I, I want to really nail down into something that's fascinating and I think deserves its due here. And that is that what we're discussing, of course, we're not talking about random bots that are commenting at the bottom of some useless, meaningless video somewhere that's obscure and nobody's paying attention to it. We're talking about bots that are appearing in every way to be human. They have fake IDs or real IDs. They have bank accounts. They somehow have managed to get around the CAPTCHA system. They somehow have managed to uh, convince the AI over at Twitter that they're real. So uh, TDS, before we go any further into other topics, We've got to ask, how exactly are they doing this? And at this scale, how are they able to have this many bank accounts? How are they able to have this many fake identities and to escape utter scrutiny? Well, they actually have, first off, I believe that a lot of these bots or things are, some of them are actually were people at one point. Uh, they're bots from third party services that sell engagement and stuff like that when it comes to Twitter. You can buy bots in bulk there. You can, when I say bots, I mean accounts that were botted and then resold. So that would be easy. But they actually have, and I actually show in my video, they actually have a tool that's built into the browsers they're using. How they're getting around this is Twitter actually has like a limit to how many accounts you can make and how many like accounts can be active at once. What they're doing is they're actually running multiple accounts on one machine. And what they're doing is they're doing this through different browsers. So each brow so not, not the, they're the same browser, but different instances of the same browser. And built into that is a tool that automatically when solves captchas 
You can literally watch the video footage in my video of it solving the captchas manually. Just, I mean, not manually, but automatically. And you can watch it and you can see that they're doing that and they get verified. Because keep in mind, I will actually tell people something that people may not know. Twitter actually has very good bot detection. I know that may sound strange, but it's true. I have made an account to follow some of these accounts to see what they're talking about. And a lot of times I would get locked out after a certain amount of following or a certain amount of interaction. Why? Because it actually could detect that there was some suspicious activity. But with these CAPTCHA solvers and whatever, potentially you can get around that fairly easily. And these people are doing that. They're using these well, built-in tools to get around Twitter's identification system. And What about the bank account have, issue? The bank account issue is not actually that difficult because you could potentially, I would imagine, connect multiple, uh, connect one bank account to multiple accounts or whatever. I don't know exactly how they're doing it. My thought would be potentially because you can potentially become what like an organization on Twitter. It's a thing you can get like a different check mark, and anybody who's like involved in your organization can get a check mark oh, for free based off of that. I had so that's not what, thought of that. That's my thought. I also want to correct you on one other thing. This is something that Upper please, Echelon please. in his video goes into a little bit more, but it was something we were discussing. So we, we, I worked together with him on my video and, and with his a little bit. Um, so there is actually a hidden tier of blue check mark. And when I say hidden tier, it's not going to sound that hidden, but it was something that I was made aware of that isn't something I knew about. Did you know that you can actually verify? your account with ID. I did not, no. You can literally look. If you look in your settings and you have a blue, blue checkmark, you can look. It literally asks, it has the ability to be identified with an ID. Now, why is this important? Because Upper Echelon goes into it in his video, but it's fairly easy, unfortunately. I'm not going to tell people how to do it. an ID in many of these other countries, yeah. But it's also fairly easy to go on the dark web and steal an ID yep. and use it and verify yep. these accounts. Now, why am I bringing this up? We haven't seen a bunch of blue checkmark bots that are ID verified. But what I have can tell you is the person who runs this company is ID verified. And my thought, perhaps, I can't prove this, but I would imagine that being ID verified makes it a lot more difficult for you to be flagged as a bot because, I mean, you ID verified. But the funniest part is what runs this ID verification? AI. It does. It's built in to Twitter, an AI that literally will uh, will check your ID. It, it It's not, uh, again, all AI is not flawless, but it does bring up a number of questions if a lot of these things are being automated and are easy to do. And if you could potentially get uh, ID verified and that gives you an extra layer of protection, who knows what we'll see in the future. Okay, TDS, well, let's get complicated for a moment, if that's okay, and, and perhaps we'll get controversial at the same time and just have, have both of those. Two, uh, two birds, one stone, right? So we've been watching as these bots have pr been promoting uh, various companies, various properties, movies, TV shows, etc. And folks out there, I'm sure, would love to know exactly how it is that this is happening. So uh, I'll give you an example. Do you by any chance have any information regarding uh, the system that might be in place, if there is one, for these companies to have some sort of go-between, some sort of intermediary who is uh, making these connections to get these companies to do this? Do you know if one such exists or if there are multiples? Like, how is this, how is this exactly played out from the business side of things? And, and I, I would also ask, do you know if the companies are directly involved or perhaps are these bot uh, campaigners doing it all on their own? Well, we've known for a long time that companies do this. The issue has been proving it, having receipts. And that's what I endeavor to do here. Now, to answer your question, I believe it's a combination of both. Think about it this way. First off, the ad revenue thing is very easy to do. And it's not, I can tell you that there are multiple different networks doing this. This is just the one most significant one that we found so far. Um, but what also I would imagine is if, if they're already doing this, if someone's already doing this, right? If I were a company 
then I wanted to get cheap, you know, support for a show, whatever. I mean, if I knew of these networks, who says I don't slip them a couple, you know, slip them a hundred dollars or so and say, hey, just make a couple posts about this. You know, they get ad revenue from it, so they make money and you potentially make money. Now, I can't prove this, but I would imagine that actually it's not it, this these these companies perhaps are a go between. But I would imagine that uh, let's say, let's take Disney, for example, I would imagine that they have a third party that reaches out to these people and does all this, because we know if it was anywhere easy to connect Disney to this, like specifically, they'd be in deep trouble. Uh, and maybe that will change in the future. Maybe we will find something. But the point being is that I think they they do as much as they can to give plausible deniability. But uh, again, I can't prove 100% that, you know, Disney is behind this or Disney is involved. But if we can see that, that companies can do this on a massive scale to farm ad revenue, who's to say they can't be doing it to help promote shows and stuff? We know they do it. And now we can see it being done for ad revenue, right? But it would not be that difficult to simply switch that and focus less on ad revenue and more on promoting products. It's it's fairly simple and we're seeing it in action. So one of the reasons that I think what you have done is so incredibly important is because this goes far beyond just entertainment. And this has implications into the big decision coming up in November. And folks, we don't say it explicitly because it changes the way that uh, this video is viewed by the platform in which it exists. But TDS, uh, I'm very interested in your thoughts on how this system, these tools could be utilized to manipulate the news and the stories that we would see over the next year far beyond just whatever's going on with the latest movie or the latest, you know, show that people like. It has the ability to boost potential. And I will tell you that I have seen, so I can tell you, first off, you're 100% correct and it's already happening. I don't get into politics when it comes to this kind of stuff, at least because it's not my forte. Uh, but I can tell you it's already happening. I, could, I see it every single day. And, uh, if, uh, and basically what these things can do is they can bolster opinions. Think about it. If someone makes an opinion, and let's say, for example, the majority of people don't agree with it, but then suddenly a bunch of bot accounts come in and they're all echoing it with slight variation, and it boosts that post up, it now suddenly makes that person seem like they have more support, when in reality, they don't. Now, any normal person might look at that and go, something's fishy here, right? But if you're not spending like a lot of time and you're just like scrolling and you see a post that's got 60 comments and you don't click and look through each comment and you just look at a couple, right? You may now think that that post got more attention than it actually did. But in reality, it could just be a bunch of bots parroting what the original post was saying. And now it looks like this person has a giant support network when in reality, they don't. Of course, we need to re-emphasize again, folks, that these, these bots appear to the average person who's not watching videos such as this, they appear to be completely legitimate. They have followers. They're interacting with one another. They've got the blue checks. They're verified, right? They, they've escaped the CAPTCHA system. They've, uh, they have identities, one would assume, and yet they're not. Now, what we're looking at here on the screen, TDS, this is something that would look very bizarre to the average person as well. But to you, this makes perfect sense. Could you explain what these colors are and what they represent, how all of this works? It's, it's very impressive. So this is a node map. So I explain it more in the video, but as you can see, the green thing, so nodes are the, the different dots. Those are the nodes. They represent a Twitter account. The lines from them are called edges. Uh, so the edges are interactions, retweets, likes, follows, whatever it might be, right? What you're seeing is two is a blue and a you know purple pink, right? What is that? They're two similar, like a bunch of accounts that are doing similar things. They're they're talking about similar topics, like intermeshing with each other. And the shape of that actually looks very much like, uh, and you can look this up, the Osomi project or the Observatory on Social Media project, which I mentioned in my video. And there's actually a link in the description of that video that sends you there. Uh, this looks like a bot network uh, based on their you know, evidence, but the green spike is what's most interesting because the green spike appears to be organic traffic. So think about it. What it's showing is a bunch of organic users utilizing this network to mass promote things and gain and farm ad revenue. Now, imagine if this was a company, 
imagine if this was a video game. If this can be done to farm ad revenue, and it can be done this simply, and you can auto-solve captures and all this kind of stuff, it can be done for anything. And, you know, the green could also mean that we're looking at people who legitimately believe they're interacting with other humans. Now, they're not, but they might not know that. And that's why this is so insidious is because that green there means that all of this is intertwined with real interactions. Uh, essentially, you might consider that green to be the proof of efficacy, right? It might be the proof of concept that this is paying off for those using the bots. Now, uh, I'm curious, though, in terms of the company that is doing this, in terms of those who are partaking in it, do you find that they're sophisticated? Do you find that they're a large company? Who is this? I don't know what size it is. I will tell you, based off of this, it's pretty big, right? Because uh, just based off this, and the, you, you see, if you would look, if when you look back at the the node map, uh, the, there was a big green dot in the middle there. You can see that's that's specifically defined. That is the owner of the network. So he's the center of it all. Now, um, as far as the company, I'm going to actually correct you on something, okay? Because this is the Please, first time ahead. I'm able to say this. You say alleged. There's no alleging here. And I'll tell you why. Because they literally brag about it. They literally brag about it in their, you know, whatever. They, they have their Telegram. They brag about it. They uploaded videos to YouTube showing them doing this, showing the capture solving, showing them using multiple accounts, showing a guy clicking a button and getting like a dozen payments all at once. It is literally not even a thing anymore. Like this is actually happening. Like, I, I would suggest if you want to move forward a little bit in that video, um, at a certain point, you can see a window. Here, look at this. Let's uh, let, look at that. That is someone pressing a button. Look at all those payments. This was uploaded to their Twitter account. This is someone pressing a button, and automatically all these different browser iterations are multiple accounts getting paid all at once. Because think about it. If it was one account getting paid like a million dollars, that would set off some alarms. But if it's multiple accounts getting paid like 300 bucks, which is what they claim, look at this. I mean, it, it's so blatant. There's no alleging here. This is literally the, the owner of the network doing this. So this is another reason that all of this is different than anything we've ever seen before. And it really, it really begs us to investigate this and get this going. We need people to see this. We need to pe people to know what it is you found. Because if you look at this, you know, you, on one side of this, you've got the companies receiving a request, one would assume, right? And I, I know the word allegedly could be problematic considering you've brought the receipts, but I'll, I'll use it for uh, uh, the, the cause of care, let's say. Um, these companies are, one would assume, receiving a request to promote or dissuade by the way, some sort of uh, property. And they're, one would assume, receiving money for that. But then there's something else happening. And that is that at the same time that they are being paid to promote or dissuade, they also are making money on the other side of this. And they say they're making money by siphoning cash straight out of Elon Musk and Twitter. They're making money on both ends. Yeah, and what's funny, what's what you, to, it's good you mentioned that. Um, I'll tell you something that's going to shock you. It, you don't even need the company, technically. You can pay them. They, I, again, I'm not going to tell people where to go or any of this kind of stuff because I'm not alleging anybody do this. But you can pay them. They offer you to pay them a flat rate, and they will give you the tool they're using. So you can literally click a button and do everything that they're doing for a flat rate. It sounds like this needs to be stopped sooner rather than later. Fair to say? 100%. And as I said, this is just one of the most egregious ones that we found. There are more. We found overlap. This was just the one that came up with the cards to these particular bots. There are so many of these bots on Twitter. We've known this for a while. But imagine if there's... Uh, 10 companies doing this or you know 20 companies or even five it's still too many let's talk about something that matters really this, this is a tremendously important point and 
this, I think, is where we'll need to uh, end it. I'd like to get your take on Gina Carano, the Gina Carano lawsuit. Is it your, uh, is it your belief based on your investigations that Gina Carano was caught up in this? Do you believe that these sorts of bots were being used to attack her and to generate the kind of perception that there was a mob of angry anti-Gina Carano folks out there? So I can't say definitively, but if you're asking for my opinion, I would say, yes, I've actually done a video on this where I do find some potential evidence of this. What I can say with certainty and with fact is that this was whatever happened with her was not normal. It was coordinated clearly based on the research that I've done. And again, I would urge people to go check out that video because I break it down there a lot better for people. But it was clearly coordinated differently than most harassment you would think, because again, I explain more in that video. But uh, if you're asking whether or not I think this could be deployed with that, 100%. Now, I don't know if it actually was, but I do know it was definitely a coordinated effort. And I look forward to that lawsuit because I'm wondering what will come up in Discovery or if Disney will even let it get there because I don't know if they want us to see what we're going to find. TDS, if um, so, Elon Musk is funding Gina Carano in the lawsuit. Elon Musk owns X slash Twitter. Would it be your belief that Elon Musk and his software engineers, that they have the power to go back and look through the various responses coming to Gina at that time period and figure out if they were coming through an artificial location or locations? I would say yes, but the question would be if they're going to. I mean, I want to have faith in them, but I mean, this is well, so. If they want to win, now. if they want to win, I mean, if you could, if if they could prove that there was a conspiracy of bots, and we could figure out who was paying for those bots, that seems to have been the impetus for Lucasfilm to jettison Gina Carano. If it was all a ruse, I'd like to know about it really soon. I would so, too. That's something I hope that they're looking into. TDS, I have to say that after your work. I hope Elon Musk offers to hire you. And I mean that. Uh, you've done tremendous uh, work here. You've done a tremendous service to, frankly, to, to society because this is something that I have no doubt will impact the upcoming events, September, October, November. Folks, if I say the word, it puts this video in a different algorithm, so we're not going to say it. But you've done a tremendous job. I hope that this will be picked up far and wide by folks who realize the implications of fake human bank account backed uh, captcha evading blue check mark systems that are posing as humans that are generating real human interactions which are manipulating the trending which are manipulating the rank ordering of topics on Twitter and which could be used to great effect to determine what stories rise to the top and are never seen. Uh, which might be very important. You have done an awesome job, and I congratulate you, sir. Thank you. And as far as Elon Musk goes, at this point, uh, I would even take him to acknowledging it, even if he just responds with an exclamation point or something. That'd be cool. That'd be that'd be kind of like a little pat on the back for me. Uh, but yeah, I, I do hope this gets solved uh, because if it doesn't, in a couple years, who knows how much worse it could be? And again, keep in mind, I want to end on this. Keep in mind, everybody, what everything you've seen is not, it looks complicated, but in reality, it all comes down to buying something and pressing a button. Think about that. There you go, folks. Uh, Elon Musk, if you're listening, remember, he just wants a single exclamation mark, but a cyber truck would not hurt. All right, folks, <laughs> you know what would not hurt us? The like button. Share, subscribe, click it, stick it to the algorithms. It's the notification bell. Drop a comment down below. Let us know your thoughts. And perhaps most importantly, go watch the original video by Master of the TDS over on Gothic Therapy. You will not be disappointed. Folks, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and as always, keep having fun. Listen up, my brothers and sisters. You've been listening to Phil's and Zoe's with an agenda to destroy your brain cells for far too long. It's time to change your way of doing things. Oh, TPP is the place to be.
covering the news so honestly. It's a team that's cool and tried and true. Ahead of the culture curve, they're trying to keep you. Jonas and Pro, they run the show. And they dragged in the bearded culture casino. You got Valiant and Lord and Fourth of Life. Wonderful people, yeah, they all right. They got weird bringing in people like Floral, but made no mistake with Lorena Creole. Amelia and John stuttering guitarist. Martin and Tani and someone called CMS. Fat Steven makes a bunch of all the graphics. Did I mention a partnership with Bending in the comics? That guy is a guy and Doc Matt does the web stuff. There's probably some people I missed. I hope they're not uh, telling you the news. That should be fun. With accurate info that's not been spun. You can figure it out as you will see. The TPP is the place to be. Yeah, Wilton. Yeah, that was actually pretty good. Or white. But I, I think you might have forgotten Vash. Well, he lost all his friends. But it was implied. <laughs> uh.